Hello, I'm Dr. Sharma with Southern Eye Specialist. Today we're going to talk about the basic understanding of what is glaucoma. Everybody's affected with glaucoma. In my uh, professional experience, I have seen children with glaucoma, teenagers, uh, young adults in their 20s, 30s, uh, senior citizens are affected. It's a condition that is what we call non-discriminatory. It affects practically every realm of our population, including people who actually have certain conditions such as uh, diabetes. If a diabetic is not regulated, they can end up having what I call diabetic glaucoma. Uh, people with inflammatory conditions such as autoimmune, they can have constant inflammations in the eye and that could trigger them to get what we call uh, glaucoma as well. Yes, there is a predisposition to glaucoma. Normally when you have a parent with glaucoma, there's a strong indication that one of the children will have glaucoma. I'll give you an example. I was talking to a, uh, a friend of mine and he mentioned to me, he's never been to the eye doctor in 10 years and he was having problems reading. So he went to the doctor and he was diagnosed with glaucoma. And his father has glaucoma also. So if he would have been diligent about getting his eyes checked on an annual basis, that diagnosis would probably have been done much sooner than later. I don't believe so. I have been treating glaucoma for a long time and what I have found in my practice, I have about a 50-50 ratio. Uh, it equally affects both men and women because it's non-discriminatory. Uh, so that's what I have found in my personal experience. Glaucoma affects all races. Again, it's non-discriminatory. However, it does have a strong uh, indication to affect more of the African American population than any other race. Uh, it has been shown in studies uh, roughly about 10% of the African American population suffers from glaucoma. That is an interesting question because unlike all other conditions, this one I think it's on its own. It's what we call asymptomatic. Unlike somebody who's getting, let's just say, a cold, they're going to get a post-nasal drip, they're going to have uh, maybe an ear infection, a little fatigue, maybe a little sweating, and they'll know, hey, this is not normal, I need to get checked out. Unfortunately with glaucoma, that's not the case. Uh, glaucoma is what I call the silent killer of the eye. It takes away one's vision slowly without you ever knowing you're losing vision until it's too late. Well, when I see a patient, I actually assume Every patient has glaucoma until I prove otherwise. Uh, so that, that is my standard of care. Anyone who walks in the door, they have glaucoma because of the implications the condition has of that being of, uh, of being blind. Uh, that's the end stage of glaucoma is blindness. So when I see a patient, there are actually three things that I look for. One is the pressure of the internal pressure of the eye, which is unrelated to blood pressure. So when I say the internal pressure of the eye, you know, whenever people go to the eye doctor, there, there are two types of, of tests. One is it's a blue light test where they use a certain prism that comes close to the eye. The other one is that puff of air. Uh, so when we look at the pressure of the eye, there is no number to say, hey, this is normal. Each person is judged by themselves and they use the, the, their own eye as their own comparison. So when we look at the pressure of the eye, that's the first indication. The second indication, which is the most important for me, is when that pressure impedes on the back of the eye. The back of the eye, the structure that we look for is called the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the cable that goes from your brain to your eye, and that carries all the information regarding vision. I like to look at that as the Comcast cable that comes out of the wall. So when you look at that, that's the optic nerve. So when you have this uh, pressure that's in the internal part of the eye, pushing on that 
nerve. It's like a tourniquet. That pressure eventually cuts off all the circulation and the distribution of nu uh, nutrition and information to the brain. Over time, that tissue dies. So that's the second point, is the loss of tissue. The third point that we look for is when we see that loss of tissue, we run what's called a visual field. A visual field is a, uh, a device where a patient looks inside a dome and any time a light flashes in the periphery, they fire a button saying, I see it. And each eye is done independently. And then at the end, it maps out where they were deficient in seeing the light. And that's what we call a visual field. And that corresponds to loss of vision, which is the third aspect. So the first one is the high pressure. Second is death of tissue. The death of tissue leads to the third point, which is loss of vision. And when I say high pressure, uh, we like it to be under 22, but I've seen patients who have pressures of 14, which is low. Unfortunately, that's still high for themselves. It's not comparing that person to someone else. It's comparing it to their own self. So what we have over here are two photographs. We have over here a photograph of a normal patient optic nerve. As you can see, it's nice and pink. On this side, we have a patient who has glaucoma and the optic nerve is a little bit more pale, it's a little bit more white. Compared to here, we have the visual field of the normal patient. You can see there's no restriction of peripheral vision, it's nice and healthy. Contrary on the, this side here, we see the same patient with glaucoma, there's a loss of visual field because you can see some blackness in the periphery, and that is what is compromising someone's vision. This is the fundamental part of the education about glaucoma, because when one person has high pressure, they don't necessarily know they have high pressure. The only time they'll actually know they have a problem with the eye where it'll be aching, severe headache, and possibly nauseated is when sometimes the pressures go above 60 and 80. And normally we like it under 22. So what you can imagine that is almost four times the amount of pressure in the eye. So when that pressure is impeding on that, what I call the optic nerve, or what I call the Comcast cable coming from the wall, uh, when it's pressing on that nerve, for who knows how long it's been pressing on that, it basically kills the tissue. And that tissue over time leads to what we call end-stage glaucoma. And the interesting thing is when we say blindness, we're talking total blindness, right? However, with glaucoma, we always will lose our peripheral vision first. So most of the time we may not notice something, we may just bump into a cabinet, uh, and just think, oh, we're being clumsy. But the fact is, you're losing that part of the vision. That's why you always keep hitting that upper cabinet. And then over time, it gradually comes in. So all that's left is what we call tunnel vision. And then eventually, the tunnel vision goes, and that's what we call total blindness. But from an eye doctor's perspective, we need to try to preserve as much vision and peripheral vision as we can. And that's why it's important uh, to have annual eye exams by a trusted eye doctor that's going to spend time educating you and discussing how to maintain good health. Because if we can maintain good eye health, which is controlling for the pressure of the eye, we can live a life of prosperity, longevity, productivity, uh, and you know, the world is a beautiful place. We should not be compromising our vision. And in, in today's world, there's so many ways that we can actually control pressure, uh, which comes to a treatment. Uh, one of the treatments that we can do is, there's so much advancement in research and development in terms of eye drops, that it's become pretty convenient just one eye drop a day at bedtime can help take care of the problem and drive the pressure low. But in, in cases if that's not uh, feasible, uh, we go to multiple drops, and if that's not worked, then there's a minor surgery. Thank you very much for your time. I'm Dr. Sharma. My plea to you as the community is, please get your eyes checked from a trusted eye doctor that, that you have, uh, not only for yourself, 
but also for your children. A lot of times we always focus on ourselves, but we always forget about the children. Uh, and it's always important to maintain the health at a younger age so we can all live a very prosperous life, a very fruitful life, a very productive life. Uh, so that's my plea to you as a community is get your eyes checked because it is the fundamental basis of, of how we survive. But more important, the world is a beautiful place and it should be admired and appreciated on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you.